Guest now for more is uh, Dr. Michael Oren, the former Israeli ambassador to the U.S. and former deputy Israeli minister and member of Knesset, joins us from the town of Modin this evening. And uh, Ambassador Oren, Michael, thanks for joining us. Does the deployment of the THAAD uh, here in Israel uh, mean, first of all, that uh, an Israeli strike on Iran is in the cards and say even the coming weeks, but more importantly, that the U.S. and Israel are now on the same page when it comes to uh, how that strike is going to be carried out. Hey, good to be back with you, Kalev, as always. Let's just go back in history, and I think history will give us an example of how we can better understand what's happening right now. Back in 1991, um, the United States did something very similar. It moved Patriot missiles into Tel Aviv. I was actually part of the uh, reserve unit in the IDF that brought those missiles in. It was quite a story. Uh, the idea was that the, the Bush administration, this is the, the senior Bush administration, was saying to Yitzhak Shamir, the prime minister back then, don't attack Iraq, even though Iraq has fired 39 Scud missiles at Tel Aviv. If you do not, if you do not join the war against Iraq and break up the coalition against Iraq in the first Gulf War, then we will give Patriot missiles and put them in Tel Aviv. Um, it was the first time that American soldiers were deployed uh, in Tel Aviv. And as a result, Israel didn't attack Iraq. Uh, the Patriots, by the way, didn't work. Uh, they hit one Scud and made two Scuds. Uh, but other than that, they did not work. But it had a great psychological impact. So this is something that helps us understand what's going on right now, Khalif. Obviously, there's some type of negotiations going on between the United States and Israel. The United States, the Biden administration doesn't want Israel to attack uh, Iran's uh, uh, oil facilities because that will rise cause a spike in oil prices a couple weeks before the American elections. They don't want that. They don't want Israel to strike the nuclear facilities because that could uh, raise the danger of dragging America into what they call a regional war, even though, of course, we are already in a regional war. Uh, but the United States is not involved in that way. So I see that the, the deployment of the THAAD is, is, is a product of a negotiation. The question is, what is the quid pro quo? What is Israel agreed to um, in exchange for this deployment? And uh, let me ask you about that, because and I'm putting it also in the bigger picture. I know you've been in the, uh, you spent a lot of time in the, the U.S. the last couple of months trying to convince uh, decision makers in Washington about the need for Israel to reestablish its residence back in the north of Israel. So uh, let's talk about what Israel, how, how, how convinced are, do you think the, the Americans are that Israel has to take this action in Lebanon and by extension in Iran in order just to even and just restore its residents back to their homes in the north. Well, I was in the White House a couple of weeks ago with a delegation from the North that I had brought to Washington. We had met with uh, both uh, houses in Congress, both parties. Um, and in the White House, we met with uh, senior advisors to both the president and the vice president. Uh, and they told us that they would very much like to have a diplomatic resolution to the situation in the North. Um, they want to convince uh, Hezbollah to implement Resolution 1701 of Security Council from 2006. Uh, but when I ask pointedly, is the United States willing to put teeth into don't, remember the famous word of, uh, of both Biden and Secretary of State Blinken, don't to Iran, don't to Hezbollah, and in fact, both did, uh, is the United States willing to actually move from a purely defensive uh, uh, deployment in the Middle East to a more offensive uh, posture? The answer was quite clearly no. The United States does not want to get involved. And I think if they had their druthers, Kalev, they would have us basically agree to a ceasefire <laughs> Uh, in place without actually restoring our deterrence power and restoring the status quo ante of October 6, in which Hezbollah would remain along the northern border. And I guarantee you, having brought these delegations to Washington uh, of, of displaced people from the north, nobody's going to go back to the north if Hezbollah is along the border still. So what briefly, Michael, what is the end game for Israel in order to achieve that? Well, you have to push Hezbollah back. If you have to push Hezbollah back to beyond the Litani, create a situation where Hezbollah is weakened to the point where it will then implement Resolution 1701. We'll say, listen, I'm just, we're just abiding by the UN. We, we, haven't, been, we haven't been forced to do so. We, we, we decide to do so. We'll save face. Um, and Iran may recommend to, to Hezbollah to do that, because the, the alternative was to lose Hezbollah entirely. I think Iran would rather keep Hezbollah for, for another day. It's invested vast amounts of money there. So uh, Hezbollah would withdraw north of the Latani River. Uh, there would be uh, that type of ceasefire. Because I don't think it's necessarily in the cards, Kalev, to actually defeat Hezbollah. It's very different than our goal in, in Gaza, which is defeat, to, to crush Hamas. I think the idea in, in Lebanon is to weaken Hezbollah to the point where it, uh, we, it withdraws from the border and it is deterred from firing further rockets. All right, Michael Lauren, uh, Ambassador Dr. Michael Lauren, thank you for joining us. Bye, and, Mike.